Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, tonight's Common Council meeting. As always, before we start the meeting, we ask our city clerk to read the quote of the week. Thank you. The four cornerstones of character on which the structure of this nation was built are initiative, imagination, individuality, and independence. Thank you very much. Call the 16th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Bauk. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clayunis. Excuse. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ryan. Here. Zurich. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Verhasselt. Here. And Wangeman. Here. 15 present. Quorum is present. And now we uh, please rise to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Alderman Vanderweel, would you please lead us? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignations. Attorney McLean. There's a letter uh, <coughs> to the mayor that was received in the mayor's office November 4th from Brian J. Versey, uh, <coughs> advising that he's resigning from the city board of appeals. Um, and talks about moving date moving into the town of Sheboygan in uh, mid-December. Thank you. Need a motion to accept and file? Uh, President Hanna? Yes, I'd make a motion to accept and file Mr. Versey's resignation. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Resignation is accepted. <coughs> confirmation of mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Hereby submit the following appointments for your confirmation. Rachel Newton to be considered for appointment to the Tourism Advisory Committee to fill the unexpired term of Rick Peterson, whose term expires 4-30-2010. Leo Messner to be considered for appointment to the Tourism Advisory Committee to fill the unexpired term of Linda Jarr, whose term expires 4-30-2009. And Mark DeSombre to be considered for appointment to the Tourism Advisory Committee to fill the unexpired term of Kara Leonard, whose term expires 4-30-09. Signed by the Mayor. Thank you very much. I need a motion to confirm. The appointments, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to confirm the three appointments. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Appointment is confirmed. Public forum. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first on our list is Major Hellstrom. Would Major Hellstrom be here this evening? I don't believe he is. All right, next on our list is Joanne Scribner. Joanne, could you please come to the front? And if you could just get your mic up so that, there, there you go. And I need your home address, Joanne. Three Seneca Trail. And that's in Sheboygan? Sheboygan. <clears throat> okay, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Perez and Sheboygan Common Council for again giving me a chance to speak. I had one paragraph left at the end of my six minute speech at the last Common Council meeting, and here it is. Some of us are going to really start or continue to step up to the bat and work even harder to get our religious freedom back. We want our country and our city back. Next topic. When you make your decisions as politicians, keep the J-O-Y acronym in mind. J, Jesus first. O, others second. Y, yourself last. J-O-Y, joy. There is a little kid's chorus uh, that has the joy acronym right in it. So when you make your decisions using the joy acronym, whether the decisions are about the salt shed or about the use of cell phones by Sheboygan drivers, or the city budget, 
or the park near Deland Park for special needs kids. Like the twins who were born joined together and miraculously are now two separated individuals no longer joined together and have developing little personalities and bodies. The wellness conference at Blue Harbor Conference Center for the benefit of the city employees. Uh, the sex offender law that was recently passed. Um, the city manager position that is now being considered. And the site of the new police station on North 23rd Street. And what a station. Four words to describe the new police station. State of the art. Another two words, finally built. And five more words, thankfully not at Sheridan Park. By the way, I did see a lot of you who are in this room at the ribbon cutting ceremony um, on Saturday, November 15th, 9.30 a.m. A lot of you were there. Um, I was there also. Um, it was great, it was wonderful. It's nice to have a really new police station now. I couldn't take the tour that morning, I had other things to do, but I did come back later and stood in line for about 45 minutes, which was okay, had my hat, it was okay, mittens, okay. Um, uh, wound around the police tape and the chairs for people who got tired, just waiting, uh, chatted a lot to people in line next to me, which is always fun. Um, finally got to the tour door. It was led by a cop who just happened to come to the station for police business. He wasn't supposed to lead a tour. He was just in civilian dress, blue jeans and an Adidas jacket, and he was roped into giving a tour. Um, it was great, awesome tour. So, um, awesome place. I left the station about 4.15 p.m., and as I left, I checked out the Sally Port, which is sort of a New word for me, I'm not used to that word yet. But um, where are the squad cars coming and bring the, you know, the offenders? And uh, as I was walking outside, I walked east to the fence of the property. And on my way out the driveway, I was praying for the Sheboygan Police Force because they protect us. And um, they need protection as they're out and about you know, doing their protecting of us. So, um, I just wanted to also say, I don't know, I may, may have forgotten my goodie bag, but you know, we got those blue goodie bags. You know, the little football said, uh, keep kids out of the courts, have them play in sports, things like that. And by the way, Sheboygan Softball Association, have you been there in the summertime? It is so much fun. A dollar for five different games, it's great. Or you get the $10 pass for the whole summer. Other sports, school sports, Cedar Grove, Belgium, go, Rockets. Um, Sheboygan, it's a great place. I did, okay, here, you know, you, I'm sure you saw this Saturday. Here is the Reader's Digest I was mentioning last time. 50 safest places Oh, by the way, Sheboygan was rated one, number one. Kenosha, two. Um, April 1997, Reader's Excuse Digest. Excuse me, Joanne, five minutes are up. Would you like your additional minute? Yes, please. Go Thank ahead. Thank you. Okay. So to all of you, all the people here who have to make the tough decisions and the mayor, all of you, I say hats off to you guys and gals. This is not an easy job, and I just want to say to all of you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Joanne. And last on our list is Tom Bowers. Is Tom here, please? The address? I would need that. <laughs> 2120 North 36. 2120 North 26. All right, sir, you have five minutes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, mayor, 
I stand before you tonight regarding the Gus Macker basketball tournament. Uh, I'd like you to refer to you to the agenda tonight, which is uh, 16, resolution 1648, 1649. 1649 pertains to the marina committee that voted unanimously to move the Gus Macker tournament to another location. I am here representing fishermen, boaters, and citizens. Will all the people, fishermen, boaters, citizens, please stand up. My first question to this council is, why is our city being held hostage by the Girls and Boys and Girls Club? Let me give you a little background of what's gone on here in the past. Excuse me, Mr. Bowers, people can't hear you. Oh. Did you want to pull the mic up to you a little oh, bit closer? Okay. That'd be great. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. The last uh, roughly two weeks, the Marina Committee met The Marina Committee is made up of volunteers and members of this council. I believe there are two members of the council, Mr. Geisha and Mr. Ryan. I'm sorry if I missed somebody. It's also made up of, as I said, volunteers who meet uh, at least once a month. Also in attendance was the director, I believe, of the Boys and Girls Club which as the meeting went on, became very abusive towards this marina board. I might add, Alderman Meyer, who was not a member, but it's the head of the Public Works Committee was in attendance. I believe it was the next day the Public Works Committee met. The, I believe the three members that were in attendance were Alderman Meyer, and two members of her committee. The question was put forth to our person Meyer, what happened at the meeting? Her answer was, it was an ugly meeting. <clears throat> now when someone says it's an ugly meeting, you would think someone on that committee would say, what's ugly about it? No one said a word. The vote was taken. The vote was to hold the Gus Meyer Macker Tournament at the marina. At that time, I don't know if it was then or what the meeting with the mayor, when Alderman, Alder Person Meyer said to the Boys and Girls representative, we owe you an apology. For what, I do not know. The next meeting took place between the mayor, Alderman Meyer, and a member from the Marina Committee. At that time, it was discussed to maybe change the venue. Nothing took place in that meeting, except the mayor wanted resolution 14, 1649 pull from the docket. As you will notice, 1649, <coughs> it's after 1648, obviously. But if you vote on 1648 without looking at 1649, 1649 is a moot point. Now, why did the Marina Board vote to eliminate the Gus Macker tournament at the Marina? They don't, they don't want to eliminate the tournament. They want it moot. Number one, abuse of language. Vandalism and mischief to cars, boats, parking for fishermen, and the boat. This is a small minority causing the damage. And it's not the kids from middle school to high school, it's from the older kids that they bring in. <clears throat> What's the alternative? There are many alternatives. You have the Walmart parking lot. You have a Sentry store, you have the UW Sheboygan, you have South High School. South High School, I looked at uh, Sunday, 
has tremendous potential. So how did all this come about? Excuse me, Mr. Bauer, your five minutes are up. Would you like your additional minute? Please. I'll go, go ahead. Real I'll go real fast. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> how did this come about? The Boys and Girls Club were warned two or three years before, clean up your act or this is going to be taken away from you, or at least has possibility to be taken away from Nothing has happened. The arrogant attitude on the part of the gentleman from the Boys and Girls Club, I believe, owes the city and especially the Marina Committee an apology. Whether this passes or whether you decide to do tonight, I will be in contact with the Boys and Girls Club to find out why this abusive language <coughs> was allowed. And in closing, remember, boats and fishermen need water. Basketball players do not. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much to those who addressed the council tonight. Next item on the agenda is a hearing. The finance director, treasurer, announced that there will be a hearing on the proposed budget for use during 2009. All the taxpayers and residents of the governmental unit will have the opportunity to be heard on the proposed budget. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council on the budget? Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? Is there anyone here who would like to address the council? President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion and second to close hearing. Under discussion. Your rule closed. No. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda 16-1 through 16-21. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Vice President Boren. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, before we vote on the consent agenda, I wanted to make some comments on document number 1615, if the older persons would like to pull that forward. And that document uh, has to do with the third quarter uh, report on the uh, ambulance service and I would like to first of all uh, call your attention to page six of the document the graph on the bottom of page six please as a member of the finance committee uh, I did some further crunching of these numbers that are on that are on the table I first of all want to start out by saying that the our, our new ambulance service is doing an outstanding job of providing ambulance service to the city's, city of Sheboygan. Uh, the patients have been giving feedback to the fire department that the quality of service is outstanding. And I also believe that even the response times of our ambulance service has been an improvement over Orange Cross. So I wanted to say that up front. Now getting to the financial area of the, uh, of the ambulance service so far, You'll notice on, on, the, on the bottom table on page six, under gross billings, and this is from January 1st through September 30th, uh, the ambulance service billed patients $1,474,772. Out of that, through September 30th, the city collected $488,483.76. If you, if you take uh, that amount collected, the receipts, into the gross billings, you'll find that so far through September 30th, we've been collecting 33% of the amount that we, uh, the gross amount that we billed. Now originally when the business plan was set up for the fire department, they had hoped that they were going to collect about 48% of of the uh, of the gross billings so up to this point through September 30th we're not meeting that target if we go up on top uh, uh, on the first line of that graph under the various categories uh, people with insurance 
There were 447 calls and the gross billings were $352,751. The actual amount of money collected in that category through September 30th was $186,607.28, 53%. Now I mentioned this in the Finance Committee and I also mentioned all of these points that I'm gonna be mentioning to the Finance Director to do some investigation, but it seems a little odd that insurance companies are only paying 53% of the gross billings. Uh, I would expect people that would have insurance for ambulance would probably have, if not 100% coverage, maybe 80% coverage, but we've only been collecting 53% of the uh, gross billings up to this date. My other question that I pose to the finance director to find out is what is being done by the billing service to collect the 47% that we're not collecting under that billing category to see whether we have these people on, on payment plans or exactly what's being done. I also requested the finance director to check with other cities that this billing service bills ambulances, ambulance services for to see if our 53% collections is, is, is unusually low or we are about the same as other communities. If we go down to the next one where it says self-pay, we had a 300, uh, 302 calls with a gross billing of $220,236. We actually only collected out of that 220, $236, or only 6.15% of gross billings. That also is a concern. And I also asked the city finance director to again find out what's happening in other communities with that billing category of self-pays to see if we were unusually low for that category. It, again, it seems very, very low at only 6.15%. I also want to find out what the billing service is doing to bill these people uh, and whether they have them on payment plans if, they've been, if some of these have been put out to collection. Uh, I think if we can improve on those two categories, it'll help a lot to reach our category of collecting about 48%, which was the original business target. Uh, if, we, if we go down to the balance of the receivables right next to the gross billing, we have $452,691.39. If we assume that we're gonna collect about 50% of that, under, the, under this column where it says receipts of $488,000, uh, $483.76, if we would add in half of the $452, our receipts would have been $714,829.46, or we would have met our 48% target. If the trend continues of only 33% collections, uh, we could add in another $137,000 to the $488 that we've collected, bringing that up to $625,662.97. However, that's only 42.42% of the gross billings. So if the trend continues for the rest of the year, we are going to be missing our target collections of 48% by about 6%. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, and that is that as of September 30th, if we, uh, if we look at the revenue exceeding expenses on a cash basis, it was $146,977. If we use the mod uh, modified accrual method, it's $172,201. I think we have a very good chance because of the increased volume that we've been, the, and, and by increased volume I mean the number of calls that the fire department is making. If we can improve on the percentage of our collections, we stand a very, very good chance of having just an outstanding year, uh, our first year in the, in the ambulance service. But we're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to find out some answers as to why the collections are, are low. Uh, also, in fairness, in, in fairness to the answering service, just one more thing I wanna mention is we've asked the finance director to track the receivables from 2008 into the first quarter of 2009 so we get an accurate picture 
at the end of the first quarter of 2009, which we, what, we, what we actually collected for uh, the year 2008. So uh, I want this, I, and I, I think I speak for all of the finance committee, we want this financial reporting of the ambulance service that's being done by the finance department to be as transparent as possible and for our citizens of Sheboygan to know exactly what's going on. So I, I see the only thing that we need to improve on is just the percentage of our collections and we're gonna be working very hard on that and the finance committee is gonna be monitoring that very closely as we go forward. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Oh, I'm guessing you next. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I echo um, Alderman Boren's uh, concerns about receivables. That's a, that's a big deal. But um, a couple of points I wanted to bring up um, so that people don't think this is a doom and gloom situation. It's actually just the opposite. And Alderman Bourne, again, is, is accurate and correct. Uh, despite that, the ambulance service is at 95.3% at the end of the third quarter of its annual goal. In other words, 4.7% needs to be made in the fourth quarter for it to exceed. Those are remarkable performance numbers in excess of any uh, projections uh, from a revenue side. And in addition, we've heard a lot about, uh, and I get kind of tired of it, frankly, um, the cooking of the books uh, comments that we occasionally hear at public forum. Uh, the report that you all have for the ambulance service is not prepared by the fire department. The finance committee, I think, wisely moved that. So it's prepared, or pardon me, isn't compared, prepared by the fire department. It's prepared by the finance department. So the conspiracy to cook the books would have to go all the way down to our billing company in Mequon to the finance department in some big smoke-filled room. The numbers are true and accurate, and uh, Alderman Bourne is accurate and correct, and the finance committee is in full support of everything he said, uh, only I just didn't want to leave the impression that things are going stinky. Things are going incredibly well to our bottom line and exceeding expectations, and uh, the citizens should be proud of the service. Thank you. Okay, we will call the vote on 161 through 1621 consent agenda. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 1622 to be referred, report of officers to 1623, Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to make a motion to refer this um, RO back to Public Works. We are still waiting on some information from the Town of Wilson. Is there a second to that? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. 1624 by the City Clerk submitting is a matter of record, a communication from the board of directors of the, how do you pronounce it? It's Clickanoy. <laughs> of the Clickanoy Foundation approving a distribution to the city of Sheboygan in the amount of $5,000 to be used for the preservation project by the city clerk for the early city records. Uh, President Hanna, just a motion to accept and file. Let's see, I would make a motion to uh, <clears throat> move the report of officer be uh, accepted and placed on file. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on that? Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd just like to uh, say that I have some dealings, uh, some volunteer organizations I serve on outside the city, and the Clickenoy Foundation is very generous uh, and cares deeply about the history and preserving the history of this city. And I just, on behalf of all of us, like to thank the Clickenoy Foundation for their contribution. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carry. 1625 by the city clerk submitting a communication from the city clerk expressing gratitude to the community for all the support that was received during the presidential election process. Uh, would you like to make a motion to accept and file? Alderman Barn. Thank you, Mr. Your Honor. I'll make a motion to accept and file. Is there a second? Second. second. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. Uh, before Madam City Clerk reads her document, I just want to say on behalf of the citizens of Sheboygan, the thank yous should start at the top with Madam City Clerk Sue Richards for, uh, and as the people she's going to thank here, but also 
from, from Madam City Clerk for uh, the thank you for running an outstanding election and also your innovation for using the volunteers, probably one of the first cities in Wisconsin uh, that's done that and I think it was very effective, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Um, you have the floor. I have the floor. Boy, this is once every four years. Um, basically, my office is reeling from exhaustion but exhilaration from November 4th. And I sat down and I felt really, it was really important to share this with all of you and the public on my thoughts on what happened on that day. Um, it's to the city of Sheboygan. As I reflect on the past months of preparing for what has proven to truly be a historic making election, I want to offer my deepest thanks to all the people who played a part, whether large or small, in making this presidential election such a huge success. Voter turnout in the city of Sheboygan for this election was almost 80%. That's truly amazing, and I sincerely hope that voters continue to vote at not only the presidential election, but at all local and state elections. An election of this magnitude takes months of planning, organizing, training, and people. This city is blessed with a group of dedicated and caring poll workers that make sure that the voting process is transparent and available to every eligible voter. One of my main missions was to get extra support for the poll workers so that they could survive a very, very long day. I felt strongly that I needed to reach out to the community and ask for their help. I was overwhelmed by the response from citizens of Sheboygan. I received many, many phone calls from people saying, I can give you four hours of my time wherever you need me, or my husband and I can come after work. We'd love to help. The list of people grew and grew, and I had my volunteer greeters at all of the polling locations, offering their assistance to voters to find the right line, or maybe a smile and a thank you for voting. Another part of this community that rose to the occasion were the high school students from our four high schools in Sheboygan. What a fantastic opportunity for these marvelous young people to play such an important role in this election. They worked side by side with our poll workers throughout the day, being part of this exciting and challenging election process. These wonderful young adults are this country's future voters. I am so proud of all of them and believe this once in a lifetime experience with, will remain with them always. So many people played an important part in the success of this day that I can't possibly name them all, from the newspapers and radio stations that were 100% behind my efforts to involve and inform the community to my crew from Public Works that makes sure that all the equipment is properly delivered and set up at all the polling locations, to the fabulous group of seniors from the senior, Sheboygan Senior Activity Center who stamped and folded thousands of ballots, mm -hmm. to the county clerk and her staff for always being available to us, to the mayor, alderpersons, and department heads who when I asked for help, they were right there with whatever I needed. Every single city department offered their help to the city clerk's office during this very challenging time. Sheboygan should be very proud of their city employees. These are dedicated, caring people who want what is best for this community. Thank you also to my temporary help. You jumped in and did a phenomenal job. Finally, and most important, would be my staff. Linda Long, Cinda Langhoff, Cheryl Smith, and Barb Ohm. These women represent a strength and dedication to their jobs and their community that cannot be rivaled. They constantly give 1,000% to everything they do. The city clerk's office is more than just a group of employees coming to work every day. We are a team dedicated to provide excellent service to this community. These women are my support system through the good times and the bad, and I thank them from the bottom of my heart. I am truly honored to serve as Sheboygan city clerk, and I'm so proud to be a part of this community and wish to say thank you. Because of you, this city can proudly say that Sheboygan came through this presidential election with flying colors. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Sue. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1626 uh, and 27 lies over to November 24th. 1628 through 1639 to be referred. Uh, make one notation on 1639. That would also be referred to Transit Commission. Resolutions introduced three, 1640 by Alderman Hanna Montemayor, creating a temporary government structure committee to collect data, study, and make recommendations to the Common Council as to the economic and administrative feasibility of having a city manager or 
or city administrator versus a full-time mayor and a corporate council versus a city attorney. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I move that this uh, document be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Uh, the, the timing of this at this point, uh, the makeup of the committee as such to study this uh, controversial and very important issue for our city, I believe uh, that requires more discussion from this council uh, than we could possibly have tonight and uh, definitely needs to be discussed by this council before our committee is formed. So I, I move that it uh, be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Okay. Motion and second to refer to Committee of the Whole. Any discussion on the motion to refer? Alderman Montemayor, on the motion to refer? No. No. Any discussion on the motion to refer? Alderman Bout. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If it's so pleased, the, uh, the council, uh, we could hold a meeting as early as December 8th at 7.15 if it ends up being your will and pleasure. Very good. And I, I would agree with uh, the uh, notion that this is a, uh, an important uh, discussion that needs to be held uh, wisely and thoroughly by the, the council. I, I, I welcome the information that it's going to come out of this particular study. I would like to correct uh, the, uh, the erroneous deduction that was made in the Sheboygan Press that I was upset about it. I am <laughs> not upset about it. I, I, uh, I, I hope that I can be a part of the discussions myself. I've even asked uh, the Chamber of Commerce to, that maybe they could have a Friday forum on this issue too. Uh, I think it's a, uh, 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 an issue that has been circulating around for, for many years. People have talked about this. They've talked about a corporate counsel versus a city attorney. Uh, 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 attorney McLean holds a position and a mayor versus the administrator and city manager job. It's nothing new. Uh, so I hope you guys have a great discussion on it. Anything else? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion, uh, opposed? Motion carries. 1641 through 1642 lies over. President Hanna, you have one on 1641? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I need to make a motion to suspend the rules. Is there a second to that? And is there any uh, objection? There is none. Just pro proceed. Okay. Can I explain very sure. quickly? It's just very important that we have the time to print the uh, personal care account cards. Okay. I need a motion. I make a motion uh, to put the, let's see, resolution. put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. 1641, upon its passage, under discussion. Alderman Rainfleisch. I know details, so Alderman Rainfleisch is popping up again. Uh, I would ask that um, the term Benny card be uh, amended to benefit card. I'm sure that's probably the official name, but uh, probably legally, if we're going to grant the benefit card versus the Benny card, um, that we uh, change it in the uh, resolution. I'll make that motion. I made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Alderman Meyer. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. I believe the card is referred, it is called a Benny card. It is not called the benefit card. So I don't know if, if changing the name is going to do anything. It, it, it won't hurt it to change it. It won't hurt it to leave it the way it is. There's a motion on the floor. You wish to speak second time, Alderman Rinfleisch? Yeah. No, no it's, it's really more a question. If it truly is called the benefit card, then I have no problem staying as, you know, if it says on the Benny card. Um, if it does not, though, I think just for clarification, the legalese being a proper, then it's fine. But uh, if, if someone can answer that question, if it truly is called that, then I have no problem. Susan, would you please come up? One question, is it, is it called a Benny card or a Benny card? It is card? truly, <clears throat> pardon me, it's truly called the Benny card, and employees get on mybenny.com. It's a red card and it actually has the word Benny on it. Here's a card that says Benny. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Do you wish to withdraw your motion? No. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We have a motion to put 1641 upon its passage. Any more discussion? Please call the roll. 
Falk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion carries. To be referred 1643 through 1645, and prior to that, it did say that 1642 would lie over. Report of Committee 5, 1646, to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 1647, by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 8077 based on the applicant's failure to include all relevant convictions on the license application and failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Board. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and? Is there a sec second? Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. Is uh, Stephanie Garcia here tonight? She's not here, Your Honor. Please proceed. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Garcia had two opportunities to appear before our committee, the second one by certified mail. She did not appear. So therefore, she did not cooperate with the committee and uh, failed to reveal all of her convictions on her application. So therefore, it was a unanimous decision by the committee to deny the application. Thank you. President Board. Any other discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Vanderweel? Verhassel, Wangaman, Boren, aye. and Bauk. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1648 by Public Works recommending filing documents submitting a communication from the Boys and Girls Club of Sheboygan County requesting use of the land park for the Gus Macker 3 on 3 basketball tournament in 2009 and approving the request with the condition that additional security be hired for the event. I'll Alderman Meyer, and then I want to give the council and the public an explanation. Alderman Thank Meyer. you, Your Honor. Um, I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Is there, is there a second? Thank you. Under discussion? Under discussion. Right. Okay. We have had a very um, lengthy discussions on this issue. Um, we, are, we have worked the problems out, we feel. The Gus Smacker will be held on the lakefront where it had been previously but they will not be using the marina parking or the boat launch parking. We are moving down to the DLAM park for their parking. We will be possibly using some of the frontage of the Y for courts, and this, this should not impact the marina. It should not impact the boaters. We are going to have, the Gus Macker will hire security to make sure that people are not parking in the wrong parking lots. Um, we feel very strongly that this solution will work for everybody. I know there's a lot of rumor and misinformation in the community, but I think we are all intelligent. We've talked, we've worked out the uh, situation, and Gus Macker has made it very clear that they want to stay on the lakefront because that is the reason people are coming to Sheboygan. They could go to any blacktop in any part of the, the state, and um, we are the number two spot in the country. We have people as far away as Florida coming to Sheboygan for this event because of our lakefront. This brings in, I believe it was close to 5,000 people for this Gus Smacker event. And I'm hoping that the solutions we've come up with are going, going to solve all the problems. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to offer an explanation uh, to some of the comments that were made tonight and perhaps some of the comments that are floating around uh, the city of Sheboygan. It, we, and there are two things that we need to look at. First of all, we need to look at, we have two conflicting documents, which we've discussed before, that one will tend to override the other, not tend, will override the other. Uh, I'm hoping that the council will accept and adopt that 1648 and file 1649 for two reasons. One is the Marina Committee does not have authority to deny or grant the, uh, the, the use of our parks. That's public works. The Marina Committee has no authority to do that. I'm not sure why, why that happened. The second reason is, is, is probably the best reason of all, and that is that uh, I believe a fair, uh, reasonable compromise has been reached. I did speak with Mike Froh, who is the chairman of the Marina Committee, and um, 
Alderman Meyer and Kim Swisher were present also. We had a very good discussion as to what the concerns were and how we could make this thing work. I'm a huge supporter of fishermen. Uh, I'm a huge supporter of the marina, but I'm also a huge supporter of the Boys and Girls Club. I know exactly what they do and the benefit that they provide to our children in the community, and I'm extremely proud of that particular club and the work that Jeff has done there. So what we had is we had uh, an issue that involved some, some uh, competing interest and competing concerns, and what I wanted to do is get together with the individuals that were involved and how do we make this thing work for this year and perhaps look at other alternatives during the year for the next year. And as I said, I believe we've reached a good compromise. Alwyn Meyer has pretty much outlined what that compromise is. I did speak with, uh, uh, as I said, with Mike Crow. He was agreeable to that. I spoke with Jeff. He promised to get back to me. I called today. I actually spoke to Tom Liebel, uh, Leibham, Tom Leibham, who is the chairman of the board for the Boys and Girls Club. And he is in agreement of this particular compromise. I believe that this resolution is, is a fair resolution. The Boys and Girls Club are happy. The marina is, is committee is, uh, from what I understand from Mike, uh, would, would be happy. And we can have this event and then start thinking, well, have some serious discussion with the Boys and Girls Club about where, where, we want, where they want to go from here on. OK, next we have Alderman Marine uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I agree. I think both events for the uh, city of Sheboygan are, are huge. Um, when I first went, went to school and was going to school in Michigan, I knew several people that were traveling to Sheboygan who didn't know I was from there just to play basketball. Uh, and that's not, certainly not as far away as Florida is, but uh, that's many, many years ago already that people have been doing that. Certainly, it's becoming even a bigger event, and it is because of where it's being held. Uh, but likewise, we have one of the best fishing areas uh, in the Great Lakes as well, and we get a lot of tourists from all over this country fishing here as well. Um, and I think we, ha we needed to find a way, and I think that way was found, uh, to, meet, to meet both goals. Uh, because tourism is an important part of our economy here. And um, this one particular weekend, it's a good problem to have, that we have so many people wanting to use it, the, the area. We have other areas where no one wants to use. We have an area that everyone wants to use, and it's a good problem to have. So uh, I commend uh, the Public Works Department. I commend your, you and your office for finding a, a way that we can have both protect the uh, property of the boat owners, keep access for the, the lake for the boat owners, and still hold the event near the lakefront. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Alwyn Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I do believe this is a good compromise. Um, you know, we we have the new Sheboygan Sailing Center going in down at uh, down at the uh, by the marina also, which will uh, make it that much more congested this summer. So, provided that there is ample security to keep that parking lot open for the for the boaters, for the fishermen, um, that those people that that pay two to three thousand dollars a year for a slip at our marina uh, have access to their boats. Um, I think this is a great compromise. The, uh, the Boys and Girls uh, uh, Club and the uh, Gus Macker is a, are, are, the Boys and Girls Club is a great organization. The Gus Macker is a great event that uh, draws many thousand people to our city. So I will, being on the Marina and Harbor Committee is a uh, compromise, I will support this also. Thank you. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm also on the, uh, with Alderman Ryan on the uh, Marina and Harbor uh, Committee. And um, I've received a lot of calls on this on all sides. And I just wanted to uh, thank Alderperson Meyer and yourself uh, in working with Mike Fro and the people of the Boys and Girls Club. It was kind of a landmine issue. Every time you stepped, everybody had their own feelings. And everybody wants to help the Boys and Girls Club. And I think this compromise that was worked out, frankly, by your office with, uh, with Alderperson Meyer um, is excellent. And, uh, and with the message that. We have a year to look at other alternatives, I think, is spectacular. So I just want to thank you for that. Thank you. And we have Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I just need a clarification. First of all, I definitely support the compromise for 2009. However, I do not, I do not support keeping it down there after 2009. And I guess uh, your discussions that you had with Mr. Liveham, the board, uh, they are, this is going to be the last year in 2009, or is that still open? We're definitely going to move it starting in 2010. Uh, I was on the Marina Committee last year, and this, this subject was, is nothing new to this year. Uh, the, the director of the Boys and Girls Club was already put on notice last year that, at least from the Marina's committee standpoint, that uh, he should be looking for another, for another location. And I believe with that, 
with that suggestion from the Marina Committee, uh, Kim Swisher uh, looked at the venue down by Blue Harbor and also even looked into parking over at the Pentair parking lot and got permission for the, for the people to park down there and hold it over at, at the, at the, the uh, um, Blue Harbor area. And uh, I would think, you know, looking at it, it there, there, there are a lot more amenities down in that area and a lot of small businesses on that side of the river that could be using traffic that the Gus Macker tournament would, uh, would generate. And it probably is a little more work for the director of the Boys and Girls Club to have to go down there uh, and design how he's going to do the courts. But my understanding, the, the study showed that Kim Swisher did, that it easily could be handled down at Blue Harbor. Uh, and again, there's a lot of amenities on that side of the river and a lot of small businesses that could benefit from those 5,000 people coming down there. And now in the parking lot over at the marina, there's really not a lot of businesses real close that can benefit. So I will support the compromise with the idea that 2009 is the last year that it's going to be held at the marina. So we have that understanding with them that, uh, that it's pro probably going to move in 2010. Probably, may I? Yes. Probably is uh, the, the correct term. The understanding is that they will do it, they will operate the Gus Macker event under the compromised terms. And within the next year, we will talk pretty vigorously as to what the alternatives are because I think it's pretty clear to the, uh, the Boys and Girls Club that the sentiment of the council and a lot and part of the community is that it needs to move, perhaps it's outgrown at its, its location and that there could be other, other uh, locations that would be just as good or better uh, they've agreed to, to meet periodically so that we can talk about those options and that's the, and the probability of your term probably is correct. I support having good candid discussions about what, where can we go, where can the Gus Maker pro, uh, event go after this year. Okay? Yeah, um, on about your next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, just on behalf of the, uh, the residents of District 2, uh, which is where Gus Macker happens, I uh, would just like to say that I, I see every year uh, it, it clogs our streets right up, but in a good way. Uh, you can't find a parking spot anywhere within three or four blocks of the beachfront that whole time. And uh, I'm usually out in my yard that weekend working around and I, I forget about the tournament and I wake up and all of a sudden there are no parking spots. And I see lots of uh, young men and, and uh, a few young women and their, and their fathers, usually their fathers, and they're bouncing a basketball, they're dressed in their favorite uh, uh, basketball jersey and they're having father-son conversations or male role model conversations and I see them all flocking from inland walking down my street and down the steps down to the beach and stuff and it's just it's probably a little crowded for, for the people going to the beach it's crowded for the people wanting to go fishing but all in all I think it's probably a pretty good thing it's a, it's a great event it's good for it's good for district two it makes us remember that people really like our city and really like our beach even if it is a parking inconvenience and uh, I think it's a gem and I'm glad about the compromise because we want to make sure because again we love our boaters too and they they pay an awful lot of money to have access down there so uh, I think we found a good compromise that's good for the city and good for uh, all the interested parties and I thank the mayor for his work. Thank you. Well, okay there is no more discussion let's call a roll on uh, 1648 to accept and adopt. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Surik, Vanderweel, Verhasselt, Wangaman, Boren, Bauk, Decker, Aye. 15 eyes. Motion carries. 1649, uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to uh, file the report of committee. Second. Motion and second to file under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 1651, 1652 to be referred for part of committee. 1653 and 54 lies over to November 24th. Ordinance introduced 10, 1655 to be referred. Matters laid over. Resolution number 1420809 by all the persons Gisha, Clayunas, Born, and Montemayor authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget establishing revenue and appropriation for the donation received for Park Bench. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call roll. 
Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1532, resolution number 1430809 by Alder Persons Gisha, Montemayor, Bauk, and Boren, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing appropriations for early retirement incentive payments. The advance will be, be, will be repaid with interest over five years with the first payment in June 2010. Alder Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Ryan? Aye. Surik? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? No. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. 11 ayes, 4 noes. Motion carries. 1533, resolution number 1440809 by Alder Persons Gisha, Clayunas, Born, Bauk, and Montemayor, authorizing the finance director treasurer to enter into contract for HVAC improvements at fire station number 3. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Right. Meyer? Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1553, General Ordinance number 670809 by older persons Hannah, Heidemann, Kittleson, Rinfleisch, and Ryan. Amendment General Ordinance number 660809 dated December 3rd, 2007 relating to a no parking zone along the north side of Martin Avenue from west curb line of North 15th Street to a point 67 feet west thereof. <coughs> President, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Uh, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Wangeman. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. Attorney McLean? 1656 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Carter Paulus requesting an outside audit of the complete fire department for determining the accuracy of their quarterly and annual financial reports with emphasis on the paramedic costs, salaries, expenses, equipment, and related costs. That will be referred to finance and public protection and safety. 1657 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Vicki Hall expressing her puzzlement and frustration as to why the Common Council would not seek input on the proposed Sheboygan Playground project from the Board of Parks and Forestry Commissioners. That will be referred to Public Works Committee. 1658 is an RO by the Deputy Finance Director Treasurer submitting the Harbor Center Marina balance sheet from operations dated October 31, 2008, as submitted by Skipper Marine. That will be referred to Marina and Harbor Committee. Need a motion to adjourn? I've got one more. Oh, I'm sorry. We got one more. 1659 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2009 and June 30, 2010. That will be referred to law and licensing. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Stand adjourned.